Hello guys, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. This video summarizes topic 12, respiration. Respiration is a chemical process where glucose is broken down to release energy to carry out different cellular processes. This reaction happens in almost all cells in the body. The process of respiration is controlled by enzymes. In the previous video, we learned about breathing, which is often confused with respiration. So remember, breathing is the physical process of inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide in and out of our lungs. On the other hand, respiration is the chemical process which releases energy from glucose. So for what is this energy needed? The uses of energy in living organisms include muscle contraction, protein synthesis, cell division, active transport, growth, the passage of nerve impulses and the maintenance of a constant body temperature. Next, let's investigate and describe the effect of temperature on respiration. Yeast is a living organism, so it can be used to investigate how its respiration is affected by temperature. So first, add yeast and glucose solution to a test tube. Place the test tube in a water bath of 30 degrees Celsius. This is done to control the temperature. Add a drop of methylene blue, which is a suitable indicator for this experiment, to the test tube and start the timer. Shake for 10 seconds. Record how long it takes for methylene blue to turn colorless. The faster the dye changes from blue to colorless, the faster the rate of respiration. Repeat the experiment at different temperatures. So the independent variable or the factor we are changing is temperature. We can do this using water baths of different temperatures. Find the rate of respiration at each temperature. The rate of respiration is the dependent variable. The time taken for color change can be converted into rate of respiration. So this is how the experiment may be set up. The variables that must be controlled are amount of methylene blue dye added, amount of yeast suspension in the test tubes, concentration of glucose and pH. The time taken for color change can be converted into rate of respiration. With the formula, rate is equal to 1 divided by time. And a graph like this may be observed with the results of this experiment. So as the temperature increases up to 40 degrees Celsius, the rate of respiration increases. So the time taken for the solution to become colorless reduces. The rate increases as the number of collisions between enzymes and substrates increases. Beyond 40 degrees Celsius, the rate of respiration decreases, so the time taken for the solution to become colorless increases. The rate decreases since enzymes start to denature. Therefore, as temperature increases, the rate of respiration also increases until a certain point after which the rate will decrease. Respiration can take place aerobically, that is with oxygen, or anaerobically, that is without oxygen. 
let's learn about aerobic respiration first. Aerobic respiration is the chemical reactions in cells that use oxygen to break down nutrient molecules to release energy. The word equation for aerobic respiration is glucose and oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. Obviously, energy is also released in this reaction. The balanced chemical equation for aerobic respiration is C6H12O6 and 6O2 to give 6CO2 and 6H2O. Next, what is anaerobic respiration? Anaerobic respiration is the chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrient molecules to release energy without using oxygen. Anaerobic respiration releases much less energy per glucose molecule than aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration can take place in yeast. This process is also used in bread making and brewing. The word equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast is glucose to give alcohol and carbon dioxide. The balanced chemical equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast is C6H12O6 to give 2C2H5OH and 2CO2. Anaerobic respiration also occurs in muscle cells during vigorous exercise. The word equation for anaerobic respiration in muscles during vigorous exercise is glucose to give lactic acid. When we do strenuous exercise, the muscles demand more energy. The energy needed cannot be provided by just aerobic respiration because muscles may not be receiving oxygen quick enough. Therefore, anaerobic respiration must take place to provide the necessary energy. This breaks down glucose without oxygen, producing lactic acid as a toxic waste product. Less energy is produced when glucose is broken down anaerobically. Lactic acid builds up in the muscle cells and this can prove to be toxic to muscle cells, causing cramps, muscle fatigue, etc. So it needs to be removed. Even after exercise, the heart rate continues to be fast so that it can transport the lactic acid in the blood from the muscles to the liver quickly. At the liver, the lactic acid reacts with oxygen and produces carbon dioxide and water. This is actually aerobic respiration with lactic acid as the nutrient molecule instead of glucose. The temporary shortage of oxygen during vigorous exercise is known as oxygen debt. Even after exercise, we continue to breathe deeper and faster in order to supply sufficient oxygen for aerobic respiration of lactic acid to repay the oxygen debt. An easy way to remember this is, during exercise, you borrowed extra energy without paying for it with oxygen. Your breathing rate and heart rate return to normal after you finish breaking down all the lactic acid. 
this table compares the two types of respiration. Oxygen is needed in aerobic respiration while in anaerobic respiration it is not needed. The products of aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide and water. The product of anaerobic respiration in animal cells is lactic acid and in yeast it's carbon dioxide and ethanol. A lot of energy is released in aerobic respiration and a little energy is released in anaerobic respiration. So that concludes chapter 12, Respiration. Hope this video helped you. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye-bye.